So we're going to have our thoughts on the New York Islanders postseason that ended Sunday night, uh, Friday night. Sorry, Anthony, it just happened with uh, Yanni Gorin's shorthanded goal and Vasilevsky, his fourth consecutive uh, game, uh, game series clinching shutout. So, um, Anthony, your thoughts on on first the, the, the game seven? What are your thoughts? Um. I'll say this. If either one of you guys told me, like, for instance, I didn't see the game and you just simply made a statement of saying um, Tampa Bay top line was ineffective, they only scored one goal, and then you guys said, all right, so guess what do you think the outcome of the game was? I, I would have I would have jumped up and down and I said, I would have said, holy crap, Islanders going to the Stanley Cup Finals because, I mean, that just sounds like a great scenario for the Islanders. But no, they allow a shorthand <clears throat> goal. Um, they don't score, and their season ends in a game seven. Um, you know, it is very frustrating because, again, I, I thought the Islanders did a fantastic job. I thought Braden Point was a non factor. Kucherov, uh, while clearly playing hurt, non factor. Stamkos, non factor. They should they, they shut Tampa Bay down. Unfortunately, Tampa Bay shut the Islanders down. Um, and yeah, you, you could say they didn't score a goal, and that's why they lost, which is absolutely true. But at the same time, if Palmieri, Letty, and, and Bailey don't look like a couple of monkeys trying to hump a football and just get crossed up on that coverage on a shorthanded goal, it's a it's a it's a zero it's a zero zero game going into overtime, and now it's just one shot away. And I mean, and that's that's a fact. So yeah, I mean, you could point out they didn't score. That that's true, but they really they really screwed up with that shorthanded goal. Um, I don't know why Bailey or Palmieri didn't one hang high in the slot. Um, I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they were just pressuring Sorelli so he couldn't get the puck down to the lightning zone to kill more time. And he, uh, I don't know. But it, yeah, it was, it was sad to see it end like that. Being that Phil said they hadn't allowed a shorthand to go all year. I mean, how ridiculous is that? And they, their season ends on one. Um, so yeah, it was, it was heart, it was heartbreaking. Um, you know, I was, I was really disappointed, but. You know, as the sting started to wear off, um, you know, days went on. I'm, I'm proud of this Islander team. You know, second year in a row they got there. They pushed Tampa Bay to the limit. I mean, Tampa Bay hadn't faced elimination in over two years. The Islanders pushed them to the brink. Uh, and I'm sure Tampa Bay was feeling the pressure during that game. It was that close. But you know what? It does sting. But like I said, I'm proud of the team. I just wish it would have been a, I just wish it would have been a different ending. Unfortunately, every single year, um, you know, only one team gets to lift the cup. So you always got to remember that. And the Islanders belong there. They they played sensational this entire time. Um, John, your thoughts on Game Step? Oh, by the way, nice Brooksism that you use right there. Brooksism? The monkey humping a football or Brooks? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. So you're talking to me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Um. Yeah, I would agree with Goldberg's comment right there. The that was the real Cup Finals, just like in ninety four. Totally serial. The, the ninety four, the ninety four Eastern Conference Finals was the Stanley Cup Finals. Like if you would have flip flop that, if you would have flip flop those two series, that would have been the uh, the real Stanley Cup Finals for me, the Rangers and the Devils. But the Islanders, I mean, it, it kind of reminded me of the Game Seven that they played against Washington in 2015 it just seemed like they weren't getting enough high quality high danger scoring game. i mean vasilevsky wasn't tested too too much in that game i mean he was good when he had to be but you got to do better to get more chances than that i don't know how you could i guess if you get the overtime you can kind of super <laughs> man bear pig oh god but um yeah I, I would say that uh, they looked kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say disoriented, but it just, it wasn't, they weren't on their game at all. I, they just they weren't firing on those cylinders that they had been firing on in previous games. Like in game six, like even though Tampa was up to nothing at one point, like there was a real sense that the calendars could win that game and they ended up winning that game. I never got that sense in game seven. I just, it, something just didn't, 
It, it just wasn't there. And the Islanders, I mean, if you're an Islander fan, like Anthony said, you have nothing to be ashamed of here. I mean, they, they played some real good, smart, tough, hard playoff hockey. And they, they pushed the champions to the brink. Uh, I, I honestly think that that's probably the biggest competition that they're going to have. It's kind of like how the Red Wings, you know, they went into Washington in the Stanley Cup Finals and just absolutely housed them after facing Dallas. And Dallas was probably going to be the toughest team they faced in 98. So, um, yeah, I, I, w- I would say that, you know, the Islanders, they did a good job. Now it's a matter of who can they keep. Um, <laughs> oh, the we the we were loud banners, Justin. Yeah, uh, but um, I, like I said, it, it, the Islanders they have some pieces. It's a matter of who they can keep now going forward. It's going to be a real interesting off season for them. But this is one of those off uh, post seasons where like it's a memorable ride if you're a fan. Like 2014, we'll never forget 2014. Oh yeah. We'll never forget that. It was it was crazy. But you know what? The Islanders lost to a better team. There's no shame in that. And then uh, maybe if the Lou gets creative, keeps the pieces that they have together, maybe, maybe they can rematch Tampa next year. Who the hell knows? I'm I'm interested. Well, well first, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And somebody was at the bar last night that echoed what I said before. They missed Anders Lee, and they needed Anders Lee in this series. If they get, um, oh, all right, all the way, John. Don't do it, man. Don't off yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, if only LA beat. No, no, you know what? See, by the way, Anthony, at least you could say you guys left it all out there, and there's, and you know, let me address one controversy from the other night. Because, again, hearing about, oh, well, there was too many men on the ice. It's a routine call. That's not what too many men on the ice is. I know literally there was too many men on the ice. They were in the middle of a line change. But too many men on the ice is if someone extra is coming off the bench and then they handle the puck and the other guy hasn't gotten off yet. That's too many men on the ice. Not where you're in one end of the ice and there's the guy that's 10 feet from the bench. That's two that's, guys get onto the bench from their shift. They're literally out of the play. It's not too many men. And, and I, the guys that were replacing them weren't in the play. That's what it was. Uh, I'll I'll put the picture up in uh in the edited version of this. Yeah. Uh, but okay, but yeah, but again, look, the Islanders. We we know this. Their culture is different now. They're they're back to looking like a winning organization, not. The joke that they were, um, uh, Anthony. You talked about it being, or no, John. You talked about it being uh, Game Seven, and uh, sort of like the Capital Series. That that series again, eleven shots in a Game Seven. If you're my coach, you're eleven shots in a Game Seven. You're not making it to the podium at the end. So it was sort of like each team was waiting for somebody to make a mistake, and like like you said, Anthony. Uh, Kyle Palmieri was just watching uh, the puck, and that and Yanni Gorn gets it back of the net, one nothing. You could have been beaten up on bay, on uh, Montreal last night. So it sucks, but it um, it is what it is. But again, there is a future for this team. So uh, we're going to talk more about uh, some of their moves in a little bit. But you got to look forward and. Uh, what components do you see next year being what your positives that you're looking for, Anthony? Well, positives for, first and foremost, they're getting their they're getting their captain back. Lee's going to be healthy, ready to go, um, and that's huge because um, you know, for instance, I know you said I'm not, if, he, if he was healthy, he played Game Seven. I'm not saying the Islanders win, but just but just having your captain on the bench and you know, like we said before, he pulls the guys in the fight. Just having his presence on the bench, you know getting the guys going that that type of stuff matters in a game so lee next season he'll be back he'll score goals he'll be the leader um and then you know barzell's a year older he's gonna remember this pain and in the post game presser he was practically crying so uh you know he's gonna hold on to that that's gonna motivate him 
all the Nelson's going to be back. Peugeot is going to be back. So the core is going to be back. They're, they're still going to have the same structure, same Barry Trotz coach team. Um, Sorokin has a year of experience. They'll probably start to do more of a slow transition from Varlamov to Sorokin. Um, so there's, there, there's, there's definitely a lot of good. It's just, you know, again, when you, when you get this far, you never know when you're, you know, when you're going to get back. Um, so that, that's the thing that I'm sure is hanging over their heads too. They're going to probably be motivated to reach it for the third time in a row, but there are a lot of positives, but obviously the negatives is their, their cap situation. And, um, it's definitely going to be something Lou is going to have to navigate. Um, and we'll see how he does. You know, it's actually funny that I'm in our honest press conference. I'm being Lou today because Lou had his media availability. Um, <laughs> but I, so that should be fun because he's such a, like a, such a respectful professional guy i'm gonna have to do a fun spin on that one but um i mean he he said he said uh he said it's gonna be hard to keep the team fully intact with the expansion draft free agency you know cap so he acknowledged that but um you know he, he said that kyle palmeri uh, wants to be back and he wants him back so i think actually where in the past i was thinking Sezikis comes back and palmeri goes i'm the last couple of days i flip-flopped i'm, I'm thinking palmeri stays and, and Sezikis goes um, but that's positive because, you know, he's a goal scorer. Because um, imagine what would have done having Palmieri and Lee in the lineup. You know, the goal was to have both of them, but Lee got hurt before that. So having more scoring punch on top of that would be good. Um, you know, and then he basically just kind of said same basic stuff. You know, Belmont's going to be ready. They're going to have to start on the road for next season. Maybe like a two-week road trip. I, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, overall, it's 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 positive to be an Islander fan right now and the organization's in a good place but um, like I said the sting from this postseason is still, still there but uh, I'm looking forward to next season already uh, Phil uh, come to Manhattan Casey uh, yeah I'll, I'll take him I'll take him especially if I think that uh... <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're moving oh, on in about uh, one minute yeah we're, we're just we're going to finish this up but i mean the islanders aren't going anywhere not they, they might regress a little depending on what moves happen and who's lost and whatnot but i i don't they're not going anywhere the, the team's going to be around for a while i mean eventually i think run into some serious cap trouble maybe in a couple of years where they're going to have to be bigger decisions made where you might start losing a core player or two but like this team isn't going anywhere right now. Not at least for like like the next few. So I think they're still gonna gonna contend. Um, I don't know how they keep Palmieri. As Palmieri, like Anthony has said in the past, is look uh, amenable to taking a uh, a hometown discount and, and staying because they're just. I don't know. Anthony is gonna say last LTIR land. I get that he played one game last year, but it's an off season. He can come back and actually be healthy, and that would be the problem. And I, 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 listen, I'm not trying to sit here and hate, but if you're absolutely counting on Lad being on LTIR, then that's not exactly the smartest way to go about it. So uh, I think Lou's going to have to get creative. I think they'll be a contender next year, but they might step back just a little bit. Well, we want to know what your thoughts are on the close of the Islander season. And also, how is Lou going to keep this team uh, going? And uh, do you, Or do you think that was too many men on the ice in Game 7? It wasn't, but uh, do you think it was? Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.